Good morning! Welcome to another day in the life of a violin maker. It's been a while so I thought I'd let you in and uh, into another day in my life. I've had my morning coffee but I'm going to have a second one. Today is a fairly... I've, I've finished two bigger repairs today so they're going to be picked up. I've got quite a few repairs to work on. A Georg Hofmeister violin to set up as well as I'm going to do a little bit of work on my new violin. I'm working on the purfling at the moment and I, I've got a bunch of sort of repairs that are nearly finished that I'm going to work on and I think I have a couple of cracks to glue. So it's a big day, an interesting day and I thought you guys might like to be here while I do all that. So firstly, I am going to clean my workbench. Okay, so yesterday afternoon I finished the two repairs for the uh, people that are picking up their instrument. So first of all, it's this Cedric Clark violin. It's uh, He's an Australian violin maker. It was made in 1998 and it had a lot of damage up around here, around the hand patch. So I've been really working on that and and uh, getting some extra varnish on there. And then I have this old German violin that uh, that I also serviced. I put a new bridge on this one. So those two instruments I'm gonna be trying out this morning. I just wanna give them a quick polish over, then I'll put the chin rests on, and uh, I'll take them next door into the shop to give them a bit of a play and do the final adjustment on the sound post. So these F holes are really far apart. So the sound post is actually quite a long way from the F holes. It's, it's interesting and I'm curious to see how that will affect the tone. Quick polish over the whole instrument. Okay, that looks good. I'll let that hang for a sec and then I will put on the um, chin rest. Okay, so that while that was drying, I um, did another polish over of the Clark violin. So I'm going to let that dry and I will put a chin rest on the old German violin. It's a genuine Stradivarius copy. Okay, the chin rest is on. I am just going into the shop to try the instrument. <laughs> It speaks very easily, which is great. I'm actually really happy, like I just use a theoretic soundpost setting, so I put it in the theoretically correct spot and then often I do little minor adjustments, but this actually sounds really good, so no minor adjustments. So this is ready to go for the client, which is great. Then I'll finish the other instrument as well and do the same thing. And then it's coffee time. Also, I actually forgot to do my morning meditation, which kind of is kind of important. So I'm going to do it now. Just going to focus on a lot of gratitude and, and being able to connect with players in a really positive and helpful way so that I can make their lives better and uh, have some kind, loving connections. All right, I'll finish getting this violin sounding its best. Now I'm gonna make my coffee. Good. All right, that 
that's the other one uh, uh, that I have to check over that's being picked up today. So I've got the old German violin and the Clark violin. So Cedric Clark was an Australian violin maker who worked with A.E. Smith in Sydney and learned from them. Uh, his dad was also a violin maker but also working for Smith. He was born in 1929, died 2000. This is from 1998 so it's one of the very late instruments when he was in his late 60s. But you know, like, nice looking instrument. You can see a little bit the A.E. Smith influence on the instrument. The varnish is very soft, so it's not good for a player with uh, strong perspiration problems. Well, I'm gonna give that a quick try as well. want to double check the uh, settings there where the sound post is make sure it's at its very best yeah that's freed up a little bit more also has given it a bit more warmth um, that's good I am going to put it aside that's ready to be picked up and now I'm going to work on my next project. <sighs> my next project is drinking coffee. I've actually got this beautiful old German violin that um, I, I it's, it's what the one that I'm selling. It, it's around $20,000. Um, super beautiful. And I've had to do a little bit of work up around here. Uh, I did some double edging, which means that the edge, like, it makes the edge a lot more, a lot stronger and better supported so it doesn't come undone. Uh, had to repair a couple of cracks. Uh, so it's sort of um, quite a few things. I'm also, I've, I've decided I'm going to change the pegs. I'm going to put on some much prettier pegs. Not super happy about these ones. But first of all, I'm going to put on a bridge. Working with sharp tools is really important. So I will quickly sharpen my knives before I start. Okay, I just got to clean the knives and then I am going to use the buffer wheel to do the very fine finish. I can also use a leather. Um, this is my leather. That works very nicely as well. So um, I think barbers use like a leather belt or something like that. So that's one way, but um, I also like my buffer wheel. I, I think it just does a tiny bit more. Okay, everything's sharp. Now, of course, we've got to do the test, and you may have seen the test before. Will it shave? Beautiful job of... I'll test this one as well. Yep. Oh, have a really bare arm. <laughs> All right, now that's done. I can put my um, grinding stones away, have a sip of coffee, and get into fitting the bridge. These instruments are prone to losing their neck angle because of this very high arching and especially our Australian climate isn't so good so people really have to look after, after these instruments and keep them in a fairly controlled climate. So I made the uh, neck angle quite tall because I know it'll settle in fairly quickly. So I'm going to need a high bridge. So what's really interesting here is there's a bit of a dent where the bridge goes so fitting the bridge will be it'll be an interesting shape because it has to fit into that dent. OK, 
okay, one client just came and picked up that German violin. She was super happy. It's actually a family heirloom and it, uh, it'll probably be played by her nephew or niece. So that's really exciting. That's all done. I am happy with that. It looks beautiful and should also sound beautiful when it's all, um, yeah, when I put it all together. I've got to finish working on the top plate here. I had to reset the neck, so you've got the, I put that white line along the fingerboard to, to help me. I want to change the pegs uh, to some more beautiful boxwood pegs. I think that could work really nicely. I can either do light boxwood or darker boxwood. Let's have a look. I got the lighter or the, the darker color. I don't know. I think I like this one, the darker color. I'm going to go with that. I'm wondering I might go actually go with the French style. I'll have a think about it. That's something for later. I don't know, I might even be able to convince my son to do some work today, so he might even fit the pegs for me. Uh, I've also got to do a video later. Um, I'm doing a video because I've noticed people are really struggling with sticking pegs. So I want to just do a quick video tutorial on how to unstick pegs. Uh, right now, I just got to quickly... So what I've got is I have this cello. It, it went through some flooding and, uh, and the whole thing is warped. So I want to clamp it onto a flat surface. I've got a piece of plywood here and I've just got to cut out the rough cello shape. Uh, so I'm going to go do that outside. I'm going to clamp this back to here so it can uh, start regaining its shape. I'm just going to do that really slowly because I want it to um, want to make sure it doesn't happen too fast. Anyway, I am late for lunch, so I'm going to take off for lunch. I really love my bike ride, so I try and get out there pretty much every day. And I try and combine it with lunch and a coffee. What I love about Brisbane, there are just so many parks where I live. The park I'm riding through now is South Bank. It's even got a beach, which is pretty amazing. There's also a Nepalese pagoda. Whew, all right, so I am back at work. I better clean up again. So I had my bike ride, had lunch, had a nice coffee, and now I'm going to set up this Georg Hofmeister violin. Look at this beautiful back. Absolutely stunning one piece back. So first thing I'm gonna have to do is plane the fingerboard. It's all done. Anyway, I think the player is based in the US, so they're gonna love this violin. And it looks like I will also have to set up a second one because I want one for my shop. This one's also really beautiful. So I'll get that set up as well. In a minute, I'm gonna have to do the video on pegs, like explaining pegs. So uh, that'll be fun. So I'm gonna do this fingerboard at the same time, but you don't need to watch that because you've already seen it. Okay, so uh, my son actually helped me and he fitted these pegs. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so he's done the pegs, which are beautiful. It's done the end pin. 
So now I've got to just cut a bridge for it. But also these, the other violin, um, this is for a, a violinist in California, which is also really beautiful. Like it's got a beautiful back to it. And I am looking at fitting fine tuning pegs on this one. So they're very diff different. They're the Whitmer pegs. Um, they work really well, they're very easy to turn, but they need to be fitted quite differently to normal pegs, so um, yeah, a little bit tricky. All right, uh, the other thing I have to do, I actually have to do the video now on pegs, so that's going to be my next job here, is me doing a video on pegs. All right, I'm going to end up using this violin that's been hanging here for a while, but I also because sometimes when pegs really stick, people do some pretty funny stuff like uh, to try and turn pegs. And, and one of them is, I am not kidding you, is biting the peg and <laughs> turning the violin. And uh, I've got a peg here with a beauty, some beauty bite marks on it. So I'm going to use that on the video. You just got to make sure that it's really shiny all around because then you know it's round and it's fitting. So anyway, that's what I do. It's part of, um, you know, it's another thing that I do. Um, it's kind of hard when you're working because I, I need to focus on the camera and I need to focus on the work. So it's, it's quite tricky doing these videos. So there you go, you get a little insight. I'm still working on the bridge. My son just finished the pegs on this beautiful instrument, but I'm going to drill the peg holes quickly. I just use this little, uh, this little Dremel drill. That's all done and ready. I put them fairly close to the peg box so that um, you can wind the strings nice and tightly. Okay, so I've just, uh, I've nearly got this Hofmeister finished. I've got to very quickly do the nut. Now it's time to put on the strings. For the Hofmeister, I like to use obligato strings. Okay, so I'm going to take this next door to, to give it a quick try. Okay, so the sound post is still a little bit too long, so I want to shorten it. So I'm going to hang it up and let it rest overnight. Fantastic, so that was my day. I was gonna do a little bit of varnish work on that other violin, but didn't have enough time. I've gotta finish up now. We have a place to go, it's 6 p.m. and uh, meeting some friends for dinner. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching a day in my life. I was able to finish a couple of violins for people this morning. They came, up, came picked up their instrument absolutely loved it one it was a family heirloom the other one was the sons i had another client come in about something different so it's nice i, I enjoyed chatting to to my clients as well loved having lunch with my friend i didn't show him um, uh, my friends are my friends <laughs> this is my workshop and my my world that i share did some more setting up made some bridges planed a fingerboard Got that Hofmeister mostly set up, all ready for someone to try tomorrow. My son helped me a little bit, which is great. He does a really good job on the pegs. Oh, also, I made that uh, that little frame for the cello. Uh, so that's going to sit there and slowly straighten up, um, slowly de-warp. It's quite warped. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today. Hope you enjoyed the journey. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel. When you subscribe and there's like a little drop down bell, you find out every time I post a new video. So it's a good idea to subscribe. 
Uh, I mean, the YouTube algorithms are pretty cool, but, uh, you know, when you subscribe, you definitely find out every time I post a new video. So keep making beautiful music, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!